So what we'll be doing today is we'll be starting with test ng, right? And I'll create a new Java project known as test ng tutorial. Now, why is this test ng required? That's the first thing. Why do we need test ng with Selenium? Okay. Uh, basically, if you look at the necessity of using test ng, then it goes like this. Selenium as a tool is responsible. These are my Selenium scripts. So these scripts are responsible to interact with the browser. These are individual scripts, individual, you can say, test cases, right? You might want to execute them in the batch one after another. You might want to link them. Or you might want to skip some of the test cases, right? Along with that, you would like to have uh, the data being read from some Excel file, okay? You would like to uh, generate some reports, fine. Along with that, when you execute your scripts, you want some logs to also get generated because if the script is getting executed for uh, say 5 hours or 6 hours or 10 hours, you need to know what happened when the script was getting executed, right? So apart from this, there are many other things which you need to do in order to successfully make a framework, okay? So to coordinate between these activities, look, Selenium is only out here, okay? The work of Selenium is only out here in this section. Selenium is not responsible for Excel files, logging, reporting and all. It will only interact with the browser. So what we do is, we bring in a testing framework out here. Okay. This framework is either, you can say, JUnit framework. Some people use JUnit. Some people use TestNG. Right. Then fitness is also used. Okay. So out here, this is a kind of central controlling entity, right? This reads the data from the Excel file, generates the reports, does the logging, okay, and other things as well, which we'll be studying later on, okay? Along with that, this invokes the scripts one after another, coordinates between the scripts, checks if there is an error and then report there in the reports. So that's why we use this test ng framework. Ashish, if one of our uh, tools is uh, based on some web browser, let's say it works on, uh, um, I don't know, on Internet Explorer, and okay. in parallel we, we have our application running on Internet Explorer, can Selenium manage both at the same time? You mean to say parallel execution of test cases? Yeah, let's say that instead of uh, reading from Excel, I want to read from some uh, web-based uh, application. And uh, uh, you mean you want to read from database, or you want to read from the UI of the application? Um, Look, this, this we get from the, the UI, the UI of the application. Yeah, you can do it. It's not mandatory to have the data source as an Excel file. Generally, people use Excel. Some people use XML. Some people use a database. Okay. Sometimes people also use user interface of the website. That is, the data is present on from the user interface of the website. They read the data from there. Okay. Or there, it can be any source of data. A text file as well. Some people they keep the data in the text file, right? So you can read the data from any source. Only thing is you should be having the means to read that. You should have the Java code which is going to read and supply the data to test NGJ unit or fitness or whatever it is. Okay? Right? So mm -hmm. now First thing is you need to install TestNG inside Eclipse 
as an add-on you need to install testng to install testng you can go to help install new software okay and just move to google and right test ng tickets go to this url go to install the plugin uh, actually this is the url i think everybody must be having it is 3.4 and above this is the url right and you need to copy this url and paste it over here and hit enter button so you will get the test ng option over here select it click next 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 and it will be installed it looks to be restarted right to check whether it's been successfully installed or not you simply need to go to window show you other java and test ng you will have the test ng option under java Okay, now in TestNG, you, you, have, you have to install it as a plugin inside Eclipse. Right? Some people they just think that they'll include the jar file of TestNG and it should be done. It's not like that. Yeah, there are other things associated. I'll, I'll tell you in some time why we, we need to install TestNG as a plugin. We'll get to it some time. So, what I'll do is I'll create a new package under the source folder called test cases a package is like a folder under the under the folder right now inside this package i create a new class called sample test okay and there is you should not be creating the main function in test engine all right now in test engine there are annotations there are predefined annotations and how do you write the annotations? You write at the rate test and public void test, suppose test case A1. Like just taking it some that dummy sample test, test case A1. Right? And you move your mouse over this and you will get the option as the test ng library in your project. Okay. You select this option and you will see that the test ng library will be added containing the jar file. Why do we have to add test ng as a library? Why can't I simply download the jar file from the internet and simply configure the jar file, the test ng jar file inside Eclipse? That can, sorry, uh, that, that can also be done, right? Okay, I can simply download the test ng jar file from eclipse sorry from internet and include it in the project why do i have to add it as a library well the reason is you will see, soon see the reason okay if i import the test after that you import the test and you run this file you run this file as right click run as you will get the option test ng test now this option will not be available if you just include the test ng jar file this option is available only when you install test ng in your eclipse as right as a plugin so you run this and as a test ng test right that's why we include test ng as a library okay when you run it you will see a new tab coming up over here called the results of running sample test okay in this you will see a new window having the results everything is passing everything is green right now this thing is also available to us when you install test ng so you don't include the jar file and you right click project and refresh the project and you'll see a test output folder getting generated in this you will see the reports the test ng reports in index.html right if you open index.html These are the test ng reports. 
test case A1 has passed. Right. So, I did not do anything, I just installed testNG, created a test annotation function which was blank, nothing inside it and simply gave it a dry run, so I am getting the reports and all everything generated. Now, in this we, we actually write the web driver code. Okay. Now, suppose instead of A1 test, I have my login test. And if I did, I write system dot out dot print ln logging into application. Now, in a class, you can have more than one test functions. I can write another test function called public void register. Okay, or test case register. And you just write system dot out dot print in registering user. And suppose you can have another test case called public void say test case password. You can give any name to the function. Okay, password change. System dot out dot print and then changing password. Now what I want to do is I want to execute the register test first, then test case login and then password changes. Okay. So I keep them in this order thinking that if if I give the test cases in this order, they will be executed from top to bottom. Right. Now, if I run this sample test as a test ng test, if you look at the output, the output it says total care tests run 3 failure 0 skip 0 which is absolutely correct, but you see the order. First login test got executed, then password and then register. But what I wanted was that the register test should be executed first, then login test, and then password test. The order in which these test cases are executed, okay, it's not the order in which they are placed in the file. The order is different, okay, and it's actually determined by test ng, right? It's basically alphabetical sometimes, but sometimes not alphabetical. But if you want to Make sure that the test cases they execute one after another, right? And you want to give a sequence to them. You can use, you can write like this. Depends on methods equal to hold on. You can use this command depend the test depends on methods test case register. If the test case register passes, right, only then the test case login test will be executed. That means login test will say that I want to see the results of register test and then proceed. So only if this test case is executed and it passes, then this test will execute. And after this, this test case will execute. Okay, so there are three test methods which will execute after one another. And using depends on method attribute, I can actually uh, change the flow. I can change the order in which the test cases they should be executed. Now, if I run this test, you'll see that in console, 
register, login, and password change. These test cases they are executed serially, right? They are executed in a particular order, okay? And they like one after another. And if you look at the results of executing the test, register, login, and password change. Okay. Now suppose I in the on, on the test cases I create a new class. Okay, and a new test basically uh, say upload quick test right and in this class I write at the rate test public void upload this okay and I import the test annotation fine now this was a simple sample test the first one in which I had created three methods and I had linked them together and decided the order of execution by using this now in this test suppose I am writing some web driver code in this okay and I have my expected and actual title with me I have both the titles, right? Suppose my expected type, expected uh, value is or text is say A, and the actual text which I get from the application is B, and I want to compare both of them. If they don't want, if they don't match, I need to represent a failure in the reports. Okay. So to communicate with the reports and to re report a failure or a pass, whatever it is, we use assertions in test engine. How do we use assertions? We write assert dot assert equals assert dot assert equals and we give the actual and the expected values. What we do is we give the actual value first and then the expected value. If both of them they don't match, this assertion will fail and error will be reported in the reports. If I right click on this file upload quick test and run it as a test ng test, it will say that one test was executed, failures was one because only this one was executed and if you look at the report there will be failure. Assertion error expected A but was B. And similarly in the test output folder over here the old reports are always lost, the new reports are generated. If you refresh this and look, this was the report right, if you refresh this you will see the error. Right, there is some error coming up. Right now, uh, these reports which are generated over here, they are a little technical. Okay, and you know what? In the end, what we'll be studying is we'll be studying how to generate different kind of reports. Those reports are known as test and the access delta reports. If you look at the test and the access delta reports then the XSLT reports look something like this. Okay. These are the test and the XSLT reports. They have a pie chart in them representing failed methods, pass uh, test cases, skip test cases and all everything. Okay. So we will be doing these reports but for understanding and making the test and the XSLT reports you need to understand the uh, concept of AND which I will be taking up later on. But let me concentrate on assertions now. So if they both do not match, okay, an assertion error is thrown. If both of them match, then it's fine. Okay. Now there is another kind of assertion. We write it like this: assert dot assert true. Okay. We give a condition over here. For example, three greater than two a condition which should evaluate to a boolean type, true or false, and give a message, some error message, 
whatever error message you have to give. Now assert dot assert true wants that this condition should evaluate to true in order for assertion to pass. But this will fail if the condition is false. Right now it will pass because 3 is greater than 2 the result will be true. If you run this you will see that total test runs are 1 failures were 0. Both the assertions are passing. A is also equal to A and 3 is also greater than 2. But if I write over here 3 greater than 12. Now this will evaluate to false. Right? So some error message will be printed. So if you run this you will see that one uh, request runs and one failure. Now when do we use this kind of assertion and this kind of assertion? If you have to compare some two values in the application, then you can use assert dot assert equals. But if you have a condition, for example, a condition like is an element present on the page. If it is not present, then you have to throw an error. If it is present, then you have to, you have to mark it as a pass. So in case of those conditional things, you can do it like this. Okay. But if you have some uh, values which have to be compared using web driver or selenium rc then you can use this kind of assertion okay now right now we have got these two files individually i can execute one file by right clicking on it and selecting run as test and test but what if I have to execute both of them, right? I have to batch run the files. First I need to execute sample test and after that I need to execute upload quick test. Okay, now to do this what we do in test ng is that we use the file known as test ng dot xml. Hold on, I'll get that file. This is the file. I'll paste it directly under the project. This testng.xml has to be placed directly under the project, not inside the source folder. Has to, it, you should be pasting this inside the project. So if you look at this testng.xml file, you will see that the first line is the suite name. I given my suite name as my sample suite. You can give any name over here. The first test which you need to execute is say sample test case. And you have to give in the classes, you need to give the fully qualified class name. That is the class is present, the sample test.java is present under test cases package and sample test. Okay. Then the second test was upload pick. You can give the name like this and the second test which you need to execute is under the test cases package. The test name is upload quick test. Okay, so make sure the spellings are correct. You have to give the file names, the fully qualified file names over here, along with package names. Now, if you want to run this as a batch, you can right click on testng.xml, select the option run as testng suite. So, when you run this as a testng suite, you will see that there are four runs, one failure. Okay. The upload tick quick test is failing because in this the assertion is failing. This assertion is failing. Otherwise, in the sample test case, all the C tests are executing their pass. Right? Now 
first sample test is executed and then upload pick is executed. This is because in my testng.xml, first I have given the name of the sample test and then uploading pick test. Okay. This name can be any name. It's not necessary that it has to be name of the file. But the class name out here should be the name of the file. Okay. And the name which you give over here, sample test case, is actually coming up in the test names out here. And similarly, the reports are also generated. Under the test output, the reports would be generated. Right. If you refresh this, you will see the reports coming up. These three methods passed and upload pick failed. Right. In my sample suite, test suite. Okay, so this is like this is, this is the very basics of testng. Okay, you have to uh, configure testng.xml, mention all the Java files which have to be executed serially, and inside the Java files you have the test annotation functions which will uh, actually uh, execute in, in which you can execute the test cases. Fine. Now if I have to skip a test in testng. To skip a test, sometimes you might not want to execute a test. Then you write a line, throw new. You, there's a skip exception in test ng. You can throw that deliberately. Okay. If you throw a new skip exception, right? Say skipping test, because you can write any, any reason over here, okay, why you are skipping the test. Okay, I'm getting an error on this line saying that unreachable code, obviously if the exception is I'm deliberately throwing an exception over here. Right, with the clause throw new, I can deliberately throw an exception. Obviously, this line will not be executed. So, I will just comment out the following lines after this. Temporarily, I am commenting these. Right, so if I deliberately throw a skip exception, right, and if I run this as a test ng test and using test ng.xml, if I run this, then you will see that the color is yellow, this is skipping the test. Okay. So just by writing throw new skip exception, you can skip a test case. Okay. Now, if you have a sample test, okay, this is sample test for Java. In my say register test, I throw the exception. In my register test, I throw the exception, skip exception, and I end this as a test ng test. Test ng seed. You will see that in the reports, the register test is skipped, but along with that, login test and password change test have also been skipped. This is because both the tests are dependent on register test. Only if register test is executed successfully, right? Only in that case, both the tests will be executed. Now, because this is getting skipped, the other two test cases, they are not executed and they are skipped. So that's what we see in the reports. Okay? So uh, like, uh, 